Hello everyone, this is Sebastian and I'm happy to welcome you to ITK Cybersecurity, your cybersecurity source for embedded devices. Today, we are going to talk about the new UNECE regulation and the ISO SAE 21434 standard that is coming up by the end of this year, beginning of next year, maybe. Have fun watching. Yeah, as I said, uh, today we're going to talk about the UNECE regulation and the ISO SAE 21434 standard that is coming up by the end of this year, maybe beginning next year. The UNECE regulation will lead to a European law by mid of 2020. Um, it will be activated and Japan already activated a law by beginning 2020. Um, maybe they will modify that a little bit or extend that in the future. Uh, however, it is relevant for everyone who is uh, developing and producing uh, vehicles in the world. Um, before we are going into the uh, cybersecurity topics around the standards and regulations, I have noted on so many things to uh, provide you with the best focus I can give you on the topics and uh, to not forget anything um, that I, I like to, to note here. So. Before we go into the detail, I want to start with my favorite quote by Dr. Gary Hinson, who said, security is like the brakes in your car. It slows you down, but it also makes it possible for you to go a lot faster. Actually, Dr. Hinson is comparing safety and security here, or is comparing security to a safety feature. But we all know safety and security are unequal brothers or sisters. Same terms, different methodologies and different aims. So at the end, safety protects humans and the environment from the machines, whereas security protects the machines from maliciously acting humans. And we all know um, cybersecurity problems can lead to safety issues, right? So why are we talking about the topic of cybersecurity? It is not because there is no a regulation and a standard out there um, that we need to follow, that we need to comply with. If compliance is your motivation for security, I would say you're on the wrong path. But the regulation and the standard helps us to bring in adequate security to our vehicles we are developing and producing. What is the motivator? So we've invented in a lot of connectivity features in the past, right? And these features need to be secured because otherwise attackers could simply attack the cars, make some malicious uh, things with it or uh, let it drive uh, um, against some obstacles or whatever uh, the capability of an, of an attacker is. So um, there is a quote by Joshua Common who says, um, if it has software, substitute the word hackable and if it has uh, connection, substitute the word exposed. So software was always vulnerable. Who has written un uh, bug free code? I did not. I, I thought I did in my first semesters when I handed in my first homework until my supervisor said, so many bugs, go home, do it again. <laughs> yeah. No one has ever written bug free code. And there is no bug free code in the, in the vehicles. On the other hand, uh, without the connectivity, the vulnerabilities are in the vehicle and attackers have not so many chances to really exploit those vulnerabilities. But now with the connectivity features, we are exposing our bugs, not only our software, not only our features, but also the bugs, that the vulnerabilities that we have in the software to the outside world. And that's the motivator of why we are caring about cybersecurity. And it's definitely also not the end customer because the end customer if you're asking me, would not pay extra money for extra security at the end, right? So it's not really a feature your marketing uh, department would like, but it is something that is demanded by your customers. So as I said, we have the UNECE regulation um, that will be activated by mid of 2020. And what is this regulation all about? It requires every automotive OEM to build up a cybersecurity management system, a CSMS. A CSMS is comparable to an ISMS, an information security management system. However, the methodologies used for that are 
somehow different because the focus is, is different. The ISMS is focusing on the servers, on the data that uh, is in the databases, maybe also around uh, building security or property protection, right? Um, the CSMS is focusing the security of the vehicle and its connection to, connections to the outside world. Yeah? Um, the UNACE also requires an OEM to let the CSMS be certified by a third party. So th that is important that your uh, management system is not only something that you have built up in your company, but also something that uh, was audited by someone else. So this certified cybersecurity management system should also be a risk-based management system. So they, they, they actually say they require an exhaustive risk assessment. What does that mean? So everything you're doing should not follow a checklist, should not follow some uh, super expert who said you need secure boot or uh, secure flash or secure update or secure remote di diagnostics or something like that. It should follow a risk assessment, a strategy to really analyze your system and come up, identify and evaluate the risks your system actually brings with it. Um, and then you can go into the next phases like con conceptual design of the security measures, implementation and, and, and such. The UNECE regulation also requires you to do security testing, which is vulnerability scanning, penetration testing, fast testing, you name it, right? Um, and this is required um, by the UNECE regulation. And it also requires to have detection and prevention mechanisms so that you can detect and prevent from uh, cybersecurity attacks. This is already known from IT systems where you have this IDS and IPS systems, intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems. However, of course, for a vehicle, these systems look completely different um, compared to the um, IT, IDS and IPS systems. What is also needed is a clear strategy and implementation of security operations, with, which is um, the, the strict monitoring of what you have built in into the systems. Every library, every algorithm, every crypto parameterization or crypto in itself uh, can be broken in the future, right? Um, we are living in a volatile world and the attackers gain knowledge over time, like we gain knowledge as the security engineers, right? Um, so you need to monitor what you have built in, into the vehicle to identify when something happened uh, with these uh, things you have built in, right? So that you can react and update your system, of course. Another thing that is required and the last big area the UNACE uh, regulation requires is to bring in um, a gatherer for or, or to, to, to gather forensic data. Why is that? You need forensic data to do forensics. So if something happened, you want to analyze what has happened, what was the root cause, what who has attacked your vehicle, whatever you want to analyze, you need data for that. So the UNECE regulation gives you the requirement to take care about forensic data already um, uh, during the development process. So it needs to be designed in the vehicle to gather this, uh, this important data. I like to refer uh, quite an interesting annex the UNECE has, which is the Annex 5. The Annex 5 comes up with a lot of threat areas, seven threat areas. Um, it comes up with, with uh, 32 sub-level threats, with uh, 69 attack methods, and even 48 mitigation options you have. But no, this, these are options. So you do not have a perfect security. There is no perfect security at all. You do not have even an adequate level of security if you're just following the Annex 5 and implement what is in the Annex 5. That's definitely not a risk-based approach. That is a checklist approach that is not functional, uh, functioning for, for cybersecurity, right? But it helps you to consider the right, right things. At least you should consider 
the things written in Annex 5, if you're doing the risk assessment and the concepts for your vehicle, for your components in the vehicle, whatever you're developing uh, in the automotive sector. With that, let us switch our view a little bit to the ISO SAE 21434, a joint standard uh, by two large um, um, standardization organizations and um, something that comes up with uh, valuable information with a lot of uh, great chapters um, to um, get your, your um, cybersecurity management system on track. And it, it already starts off with an important first chapter, which is a common terminology. So we have faced that with the hundreds of customers we have supported in their cybersecurity um, uh, issues and cybersecurity um, development. Um, that in, from company to company, you have different terminologies uh, for the, the same things, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate that the ISO and SAE guys came up with um, a common terminology for, for this topic. And the ISO SAE 21434 claims to be a reference implementation for the UNEC. What does that mean? Um, if you are following the ISO 21, ISO SAE 21434, I always forget the SAE, but uh, this is not, uh, not correct. I should mention both of them. They both have worked a lot on this standard. So the ISO SAE 21434 is, um, if you're following this standard, you also comply with the UNECE requirements. Does that mean that the ISO SAE 21434 is completely detailed? You don't need to care about the details, just implement it? No, it's not. Definitely not. A standard must be somehow abstract, right? And this is the same with the ISO SAE 21434. Even more important for security, because security is a volatile word, as we have identified earlier. So um, if the standard would be too detailed, um, there would be a need of um, uh, a lot of updates in the future, of course, because the world is changing, right? Um, so it's kind of abstract. And the challenge is to tailor the ISO SAE 21434 to your individual needs for your company, for your processes, for your development life cycles um, and, and such, right? Um, so it is a reference implementation, of course. It gives you uh, methodologies that work. And um, it is, at the same time, something that need to be um, filled with details by yourself in your company, right? Um, what is this uh, standard all about? It, it is talking about also risk assessment methodologies. Oh, there, there, there is a good hint. Uh, Maybe this is an excursus to uh, one of the videos we are doing in the in the future or are planning to do in the future um, about risk assessment, right? Um, there are so many methodologies for risk assessments out there, right? And we often we come across a pure attack path based approach. So noting down the attack paths an attacker could take to um, attack a vehicle. The problem is this. Um, thing comes more out of the world of servers and IT equipment um, and such. And the problem is that in a vehicle, you have the whole vehicle, but you have the components and subcomponents, the actuators and sensors, so a super complex system. And if you do a divide and conquer approach and doing your risk assessment for all these individual components and then bring this together, you will be overwhelmed by the number of permutations of the attack paths you get. So my recommendation is go for an attack tree-based approach. So the tree repre representation is way better uh, and, and way better handleable, or um, you can better handle, that's probably the right English, right? You can better handle what the result of an attack tree-based risk assessment is. So you have your damage scenarios in the root nodes and you have the capabilities um, of um, the attacker in the leave nodes, and then you evaluate um, the capabilities, propagate that to the root node, and get a decent risk assessment. We should, by the way, invite uh, Tobias. He's one of the uh, greatest uh, risk assessment uh, guys I know of, 
and he should tell us a little bit more of the secrets of the risk assessment methodologies. I'm promising we're doing this in one of our next videos. So um, back to the ISO SAE 21434. Um, it uh, comes up with a concept phase, with also product development, with validation, like security testing, of course, um, and it even has um, uh, directions for decommissioning of devices. Um, so it is absolutely recommended to follow the ISO SAE standard or to do at least a similar approach. I know that many OEMs and also big suppliers already have their security engineering processes and they might not completely fit um, to the ISO SAE 21434. There is no need that they completely fit, but they should be similar so that a third party auditor would say, yeah, that's a decent approach. That's a good approach um, to, to reach an adequate level of security. There is one last discussion I want to want to add to this video, um, which is kind of a state of the art discussion. Um, so, um, if you are not an automotive OEM, there is no need, no direct need, to follow the UNECE regulation because it's meant for automotive OEMs or for truck OEMs or for other vehicle OEMs, right? But it is not meant for uh, um, being deployed in a supplier context. However, the OEMs will dictate the suppliers to follow the ISO SAE 21434. That's my guess uh, for the future because anything else would not make sense at all. However, if you're not in this circus of uh, being required to do the ISO SAE 21434, it is an international standard and an international standard is, at least in the court, uh, considered as the state of the art. And you are required to produce state of the art products. So if it comes to court because something happened due to a cybersecurity attack, every judge in this world will ask you, did you follow the standards and regulations in this field? And maybe you are not directly affected by the ISO SAE 21434 and did something else. You asked your experts or did something on security, maybe nothing already. And you have this case. Guess how a judge would decide. You are not following the state of the art, right? And that's a big problem for all companies that are doing uh, embedded uh, devices in this world. With that, I'd like to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. It was a pleasure for me to give you some insights on UNEC and ISO SAE 21434. And I'm really looking forward to our next video to see you back on our channel, ITK Cybersecurity. Thank you. Bye.